Coming up, we have from the Hollies, Mr. Alan Clark. He has a new record coming out. That'll be on April 7th. Go down below, click on the links. I'll never forget the single Buddy's Back with Graham Nash. That's all happening now. Don't touch that dial. Alan, it's great to meet you, and thank you for spending some time with me. You know, Thanks for having me, Stephanie. You know, wonderful. I got to ask you, before we get started, okay. I love what you got behind you. See, I have... I have my Fender 78P bass. I got a little of my stuff, some cabinets here. Yeah. What do you got yeah. behind you over there? And I've got my Buddy Holly guitar, and I've got, I think I've got a 56 Telecaster over there. Oh, oh. and I also play uh, a Loudon acoustic. Oh. But yeah, the, you know. It's like, but the Buddy Holly guitar, that's your, I see right behind you, so that's your favorite right there, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, every morning I come in here and I sit. I do. I do put <laughs> Peggy Sue. I have to. I do Peggy Sue. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. There's a story about that. If you want to go that far, you, you, know. you know what? I would absolutely. I would love to go. Since you, you know, we're talking about your record, and we got buddies back, and the videos out, and I'll put the links down below for everybody to check that out. But this is Alan Clark, and co-founder, lead vocalist of the the Hollies, and uh, his new record. I'll never forget. Comes out April seventh. Includes with Graham. With, with of course with with Graham. We can't forget about Graham. Graham no, Nash. No, no, no. you wouldn't let you. <laughs> no, you know no. what? If you met Graham, I have not met him. I would love no. to meet him. I have not met him. I'm not lucky enough, but hopefully after this you, interview, he'll say, you know what? I like this Adika guy. Let's do this. <laughs> You're on Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. Make sure you check out our VIP All Access Backstage Pass. A lot of great stuff there with a lot of great guests. Unedited, unfiltered that you won't see here. You'll see me laugh. You'll see me cry. You'll see me stutter. It's all there. But in the meantime, put your hands together. We have a wonderful guest with songs like Bus Stop, Carrie Ann, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother, Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress, well, I have the co-founder and lead vocalist of the Hollies here today, Mr. Alan Clark. It all starts now. Good guy. Let's do this. Hey, listen, you had Billy, Billy Bob Thornton on not so long ago, didn't you? If yes, you can did. get on, you can get great. Buddy's back. Buddy's back. Buddy's back. So behind you, you got that Buddy Holly guitar. Yeah. So your ritual, yeah. what's your morning ritual? Is it tea, coffee, and the guitar? What do you do in the morning? Oh, yeah, I, I do. I have breakfast first with tea, not coffee. Okay. I'm not allowed until 11 o'clock, you know? So, and then, you know, I come up to my room, I switch everything on, and I look around and I take my buddy Holly guitar down from, and I do Peggy Sue. You know, Peggy Sue, as you know, Peggy Sue got married. I, I tried to get Peggy Sue from the foundation, but the only had Peggy Sue got married left. So I had to have that one. But it's great. I got mine for life, um, as, as did um, Phil Everly. Unfortunately, you know, Phil Everly died a while ago, and I'm sorry to see him go. But we got ours, but no one else got theirs for life. That's because I'd retired. But um, the guy who, who runs the actual education foundation, Mr. Bradley, he rang me up once. He says, I've got, I've got something for you, Al, which you're going to really love. I said, OK. He said, well, because you didn't get one of the guitars with a Buddy Holly fret in it, because all 25 have got a Buddy Holly fret from the original guitar. Mm -hmm. He said, what I'm going to give you is Peggy Sue's wedding ring. I said, pardon? He said, I've got Buddy, I've got, I've got Peggy Sue's wedding ring, and I'm going, to, I'm going to put it down, send it to you, and I want you to put it in your guitar and keep that. And I had to say, oh, no, you can't do that to me. You're not going to give me Peggy Sue's wedding ring and for me to lose because I'm that type of guy. You know, I, I thought, no, I had to refuse it. But it would have been great if it had a put in there. And I was really the type of guy that could let this look after things, but I'm not that kind of guy. I think when Graham and I met and we, we sang in the school, you know, they, they put us on two chairs because they'd heard us singing in the assembly. So they put me, Graham, on one chair. I mean, we were about four foot tall at that age, you know. And, uh, and we sang The Lord is My Shepherd. And he sang in harmony. And we were six years old. 
And, and to me, they, I mean, wow, that was something at that particular time. But that six was years first, old, six years old. Six years old. Yeah, that was, well, what is it, 70, 76 years ago. Incredible. Yes. No, no, I have to get this right. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, I'm ancient, you know. Uh, yeah, about, about 75, 75 years. They're young. That's it. 70, I've, I've known him, Graham, for 75 years, and it's it's incredibly stupid. It really is. But anyway, we've been together that long. We've been off and on, you know. It's one of, of those. Of course. Stuff. You know, you get certain people that come into your life. Yeah. At yeah. Time, and with Graham being, being together, until he went to grammar school, he, he passed what was called the um, the eleven plus, which allowed you if you passed, you went on to a higher education. I didn't pass it, you know. So there, we, we spent some time away from each other because we were in different schools, but we came together because of a guy called Lonnie Donegan. Yeah, he'd been over in America and he'd got all those songs like Rock Island Line, you know, Bring a Little Water, Symbol, Cumberland Gap, uh, you know, Pick a Bale of Cotton, all those things. And what he did, all the kids must have been around about the age of 13, 14. They mithered, do you know what word is mithered? They actually pleaded for their fathers to buy him a guitar. You know, luckily enough, Graham got one, I got one. And we sat down and we learned all those songs. Performing in front of people, that was, Well, huh? I, I was all the kind, I, I really was frightened when I was doing it. I really what? didn't want to be. I was the type of person that would have said, no, I'm walking away. But Graham, being Graham, even then he was saying, no, we got to do it. Come on, we'll go on. I'll, I'll be the spokesman and I'll talk about it. And we got into a routine where he would be the guy, you know, doing the talking. And, uh, and then I'd start singing. And, and that's the way it went for quite a long time. So and, that's how uh, it started out. Interesting, huh? Yeah, very much so. But he kind of um, pushed you together, you know, you guys together, and you're like, oh, just, you could do we, this. We, we were like twins, and we, you, you couldn't part us. And the, the magic about me, me, me and Graham, and, I, and I'm going to say the magic when we were together, was that every time I opened my mouth to sing a song, Graham would be there straight away with a harmony, spot on. It was like having their minds were tuned together somehow. Now, now getting back with Graham to work with him yeah. on Buddy's Back, yeah. tell me a little bit about that. I've been trying, well, when I say I've been trying to get Graham back to sing some stuff, um, it's always been in both of our minds that before we actually pass over to the other side, with all the other guys, um, that we, maybe we should complete the circle by doing an album. And, um, and I've always thought of that being a good thing to get that out of our systems before it's too late for us to do it. So um, I did have discussions with, uh, with Graham. I, I, I did a, a surprise, I was there doing a surprise assignment to give him um, a lifetime's achievement for, for, from Americana. Uh, and they, they got me to kept it a secret for me to be there on the side of the, the stage. And I was introduced and I walked on. And I didn't know where Graham was because I, I didn't want to look at him. And I gave, I gave my, my, my introduction and, and said, I've known this guy for, then it was about 72 years. And I said, and that tells you how old we are now. Um, but I'd like, and then I did, did, and he came on stage and put his arms around me, and it was very emotional. You know, it was one of those things that, that used to happen a lot in the early days. And and I, I, I said to him, I said, this is good. You know, this is good. He said, yeah, Alan, this is good. He said, I'd like to do something. So I left him on stage to sing his Teach the Children. And um, and I went home, and, uh, and then I went down to see him in London and played in my album, Resurgence. And he liked it and he said, this sounds as if we're, we're on the way to doing something. So I still had to wait just a little bit longer. So I rang him up a few times, talked about it. And then I wrote a song, uh, I'll Never Forget, which is about the reason, should we do this together? Um, what it is, we don't know really whether it's gonna be accepted by anybody. 
uh, will they remember who we are, they'll remember who Graham is, and they'll remember who I am from another group, but will the youngsters remember the sound we used to make? Um, will we get a deal? You know, all that sort of thing. So the song is about ifs and buts. Uh, and at the end, the answer to that is, if it doesn't happen, I'll never forget. So that's what that song is. And I played it to him and he said, it sounds like we should start doing it. And that was it. And uh, we came to the, the uh, decision that it would be a solo album and Graham would sing the harmonies on all of the songs. Graham's got into, uh, he, he writes different stuff now. You know, being an activist and all that, all that sort of yeah. thing. You know, I, I don't get that serious when I'm writing, but I mean, I can understand why he does this, and and I can't actually take the take the part of uh, David Crosby. You know, n n you know, we miss him too, or uh, and Stephen Stills. You know, there's just no way that my voice is going to do the same with Graham's songs as they did. So we decided that my songs are best suited for for the harmonies that Graham does with me. So as I wrote the tracks, I always wrote it with Graham in mind and what he would do in the notes that I can reach. And so it got to the part where I said to Graham, look, you know, you're doing all my songs, you better write a song. Uh, you know, write a song. And he said, OK, um, I've got one going about Buddy Holly, so I'll send it to you. And it was about three weeks later, I thought he'd forgotten. And then I got Buddy's back in the way that he does it in, in his studio with his band. And, uh, and I liked it, you know, I thought this is, this is good. You know, the, actually this, and it was two and a half minutes long. So th th this is a sound that we can make that the other people will remember that that's what we used to be like. And the type of tune that, I mean, Graham left because he didn't want to write pop songs, but he, he comes up with this one and we're together again, you know. And, uh, and we said, okay, we'll do it. So I took his version of it and took it down to my producer and we sat down and we did, we tweaked it, we did things to it, you know, but most of the basic stuff was there with Graham. His guitar is Shane, you know, Shane, he's, he's brilliant. And, uh, and so we, we did our bits on it and then I sent it to Graham and he did his harmonies, then sent it back to me and I did my vocal and then I took it back to the studio and we mixed it and, and tweaked it and things like that. And then sent it back to Graham to see if he approved, you know, and he, he approved immensely. So, you know, he said, yeah, that'd be great on the album. Uh, when I actually got the deal with BMG, um, they said this could be, you know, release this as the first single. One, because you're back with Graham. Two, because you, you love Buddy Holly and it's about Buddy Holly. And three, you're singing it and it's on an album and you've got the guitar to show, you know, what you what Buddy Holly meant to you. So there it is, it's out it's a single and it's fabulous. I want to know now about the song the, the song for your wife, because I saw in the liner notes. I was so curious to hear that one. Can you tell me about that well, one? Well she always says that I've never written her a love song. Um but you know most of the things that I've done she's always been there in the back of my mind. Uh and because she said that and uh, we'll be married 60 years next year. And uh, I thought, well, <laughs> you better write something that's worthy of it, you know. And, and it's one of those songs that you feel is right when you start singing it, you know. And, and I wrote the lyrics, which was uh, a song about no matter what happens, whether it rains or shines, or the, the world is going to come to an end, you know, it, it's all better for the presence of you. So that's what the song means. You know, it's, it, it's about, it, no matter what happens in your life, I know it's going to be great for me because you'll be standing by my side. And, and it's all, it only happens because you're there. It's the presence of you that makes it all happen. That's, that's what the song means. Beautiful. I think, I think she's pleased with it, you know. The way you described it is beautiful. That was Mr. Alan Clark. If you want to see more of this episode, check it out. All Access VIP Backstage Pass and Patreon. You can find this episode unedited, uncut, and many others. Until then, kids, I am Stefan. You are beautiful. And remember, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. Who loves you, baby? We do. Bye.